Thank you so much, Sharks. Welcome to the Castle Desk. I'm Quick Shark, joined once again by the lovely Mr. Price, aka Dagda. I mean, what's going to be the story for this game right here? Uh, it feels to me like do or die for Excel. It's not quite that desperate, but yeah. it's getting close. I mean, the fact that Dre have the potential here to pick up an extra win is going to be fantastic. Also, just a bit of revenge. SK and Vitality, where the teams Excel had to beat in winter to try and force that tiebreaker, couldn't quite do it. Now they get a chance to see if they can knock one more on the board for themselves. All right, Excel looked fantastic yesterday. Can they keep it up today? We'll find out in just a moment as they take on SK Gaming. Welcome to Picks and Bands. As a refreshing reminder, yesterday, Excel were able to take down Mad Lions in a pretty convincing win. Um, we had the pleasure of casting that game, and I think, in particular, the decisiveness in the early game from Excel was about goddamn time. And, and that's what I want to see again. A huge amount of that felt like getting this Jace for, well, gone now. I was about to say Jace for video. The fact that you're able to play around him in those early game skirmishes around the mid lane was super important for them and unfortunately video not going to get his hands on it but it's been really interesting to see because video has only played this twice in his competitive history has one win one loss but has a 60 percent ban rate against him at the moment he seems to just be popping off on this i mean he literally was sniping fools from long range yeah. yesterday hilly in particular the recipient of a lot of Zerse's Malkai yesterday hugely influential as well so that's been banned away vi rakan and annie denied by xl and for SK, what are the other options? I think Zaya, Rakan, the Ash are all champions Gragas that as well. come to my Gragas. Thank you. I keep forgetting about the Gragas. But I think that Ash, yesterday and the day before, has really fallen off in comparison to week one priority. Yeah, definitely. And it feels like it kind of had its moment where, okay, we can go for a lot of push. But I think teams are getting better at finding ways to interact with bot lane and shut this down, whether it be going for aggressive bot laners like the Nautilus and having a lot of teams just go towards things like the Zeri, where it's like, cool, we'll kind of sack the early laning phase, but play heavily for these later stage team fights where we can pop off. And I mean, that's Zeri. This will be the third time that Patrick has run it this year. One win and one loss. It has also been a flavor of the week. Zeri Lulu is a combination we've seen several times. It is something, though, that hasn't found great success. It's sitting at like a 30% win rate at the moment, whereas when you look across to something like the Zaya, 70% Plus. So I think the Zaya has kind of stepped up to be very strong in the meta, especially when you look at very short range dive compositions. She has that ability to pop up in the air, keep herself safe, but let's not talk about safety. Let's go all out with the Draven here. Exa kick locking in the Draven. Uh, just a little bit early on Ready Check, I was talking to Treats about who he thought was going to be in this game, what could be a difference maker. He immediately jumped to bot lane. Instantly went. Exa kick and DOS, these are the two kids that are popping off. These are two guys that are, are shining. Um, Exa kick is at Draven banned against him several times this split already and now he's in a champion that really wants to run away with the game and it feels like a return to form for SK they've had a bit of a disappointing week where they haven't been able to pick up a win so far we've seen things like the Aphelios coming through for Exekick where they're like hey look we're gonna actually try and play up towards Irrelevant try and have a bit of a different style you know to get Sertis on the Annie moving up there as well but instead they're gonna go back towards the Draven and go right let's go back to basics let's go back to Mado so strong in winter playing around Exekick and Doss in the spot lane now what is Doss gonna be running in that support role he knows he's going into the Zeri Lulu the Wukong has been locked in, and while I expect that to go into the hands of Zerse, we have seen a little bit of shenanigans that's been thrown top lane once or twice. Now we see the Jax is secured, so that will already start to limit some of those options in Kin in the first band. And stops the other funky flex we've seen, which is actually Irrelevant taking the Sejuani into the top lane. So at least now you know Irrelevant getting his hands on his big pick. I expect him to have a really strong performance here, and he's been able to get these big leads when left alone in this champion, so it does feel like, hey, put the eggs into the Exekick basket when it comes to Marku and Sertis and leave Irrelevant to do his thing in the top side. Already banning away some of these counters to the Jacks as well. We don't really expect Odo Amity to bring out something like a Fiora or anything along those lines. He's going to go back, you imagine, towards those more frontline basic tanks. That is something that I would anticipate and expect. I think especially when you do look at the likes of what do you want to do to get onto that Draven? Uh, what are the options that Sirtis will be running in that solo lane? We'll find out in a moment or two. But what I do like from SK's combination already, you've got that initiation, you've got some side lane threat, you've got some frontline team fight. So they've already got a fairly well-run, like a, a 
number of options that these three champions can do. The only thing they need is an aggressive support to go with this yes. now. And that's why the Nautilus ban came through. I was, just, I thought we'd see it. Uh, the other one that I'm looking at is maybe something like a Thresh that can actually play that a little bit more aggressive, but at least you still have that safety and being able to uh, move Exa Kick around if needs be, especially if Cersei is going for more aggressive style with the Wukong, but actually just going to pair with the Soraka. So kind of letting Exa Kick just do his thing and play super aggro just to the yourself in this lane. What do you make of this? Soraka flavor of the week, we're seeing it more and more. It has found some success this weekend. I don't like it when I think it's paired with the Draven, but I can also understand it, especially with the Jax. With the Sage, you want to draw out those fights too. I think it does well into the Lulu because the way it works is like he'll beat Shield in a lot of this like rock, paper, scissors <laughs> kind of scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> but the best way to kind of look at this is instead if you go back as, okay, we get push, we get range, uh, we've got this aggressive Draven, and we can also help out this Jax on side lanes as well when push comes to shove. So overall, I get it. It's just it won't be as much of a kill pressure in the lane. Also remember that Equinox Silence is gigantic. We've seen it used to fantastic effect against champions like Zeri, who really needs to use that mobility, those spells. Similarly, if you drop that silence field, the Wukong, the Lulu, hell, the Syndra, if they happen to be in range, it is very influential. I think Dracos, Dracos said yesterday it's the most OP uh, ability or CC in the game <laughs> outside of death, and I agree with it. So now the last lock in is going to be the Akali. Okay, zoom out. How do these two team compositions want to play and win? So I think a lot of this is going to be a case of having this Akali kind of work as a backline threat alongside the Jax. You've got decent split push as well because Akali can threaten Syndra underneath Terrors and later portions of the game. So overall, you've got a ton of options here. You've got decent team fighting here for SK with decent dive, but good front to back at least a little bit if you can get Draven going. But if you actually find Draven falling behind, it's very difficult then for Draven to enact on these fights with strong front line, long range CC coming through from video as well, Cersei being in the mix too. So I think a huge amount of this for SK is going to be trying to play with the map smarter than XL, whereas XL kind of running back to what worked from yesterday in these straight up front to back team fights. And this Syndra lock in, it's only the second time all year long that Vito has run the pick, but it is his fourth most played champion all time with over 22 games. So that is something that I used to kind of find synonymous with Vito. Yesterday had a very good performance, but I think specifically because we saw the roaming, we saw the movement, a lot of um, uh, initiation from Xerxes and the rest of the squad. So I want to see if they can find that same success today. Not the best of matchups for yeah. him, I will say. In the mid lane, yeah. Akali having that trade makes it a little bit tough for a Syndra to interact with her, but I think you do have a very strong pairing when it comes to early skirmishes. You know, having push for Syndra, getting her out of the lane, trying to set up for Xerxes, especially post six. So I have a feeling that's what a lot of Excel are going to be looking at. Let's find out if who's going to find out the win in SK versus Excel. Give a special shout out in a blink or you'll miss it moment. We've got a fan in the audience who says, Hey, SK, my dad is your biggest fan. Hey, there we go. So shout out to Reina, who I believe is that young lady's uh, father. I hope I've said that name right, not butchered it. It's like, it's great. Every week, I'm going to find a new fan to pick on and just put them on broadcast. I know everybody loves it, don't they, Dagda? And you're going to know everyone by name by the end of it as well, which is great. Just I know this dad's by name. I don't know who she is, but I know her dad, apparently. <laughs> so that is very fun. Nevertheless, we are now on to the rift here. Yeah. I'll take a look through the masteries or keystones, as it were. Uh, defensive starts on both sides of the rift. And so I say on that Wukong, heading yeah, into Marcoon's cool. Sejuani. Marcoon's one of the junglers that has had the ability to also really impact the early game a lot. Has been one of the sort of stand uplers along with the rest of this SK squad. And I want to see whether or not he can find opportunities to get either Certus or Exa Kick ahead. Both of those champions, once ahead, can snowball the entire game. I'm kind of curious to see exactly what the game plan is now for SK, because I first thought, okay, X-Kick, probably going to be a big focus for them, but when you're playing with the Soraka, it's significantly more difficult to actually try and play around this bottom side of the map. And as well, when you're looking at Sertis and Relevant, I feel like are going to be the big points in this 1-3-1 split push. I think that's where the main problem is going to be if SK can't really get ahead. And of course, for Excel, um, in terms of the lanes, similarly, this this kind of feels like it could be a slightly slower laning phase, maybe. Um, in terms of Akali has tools to deal with Syndra. Once, obviously, Sirtis gets access to that perfect execution, there's more threat for Sirtis to look for the solo onto VTO. As long as he's got that flash or scatter the weak, has some tools to disengage and deal with them. And then you've also got a factor in the wish, too. So if anybody does go low, 
potentially slow things down immediately. Some trading there. Top lane is irrelevant pushes into sign. This is a matchup we've seen, I think, three out of the four games we've cast already this weekend. Yeah. It's definitely a flavor of uh, day two and three. <laughs> I, I want to go back to what you were saying, though, because talking about the wish, I think it is going to be super important here, especially for people like Xertus, because I think the way, if you actually end up in a 5v5 for SK, it feels like it's more of a, okay, can we execute Patrick on the back line with Irrelevant or with Xertus? And I think the ability for you to play more aggressive because of that wish is going to be crucial for SK in trying and get as much value as possible from that. So I think this is going to be a real tester for SK if they end up even going into the mid game about how they can actually try and play these fights. I love the way you say tester, a real tester. Um, but yeah, it's like I think all, train of, turd, all, know, of, all, those, yeah. all of the fights are going to be that way though, Dagda, because the wild growth is also going to be one of those tools that can help mitigate the explosive damage from Akali, um, potentially save from a willing death. You've got heals in the wish from DOS. You've got engage and disengage tools. So. Team fights are going to be very um, interesting to see how they play out. I want to look at the vision and the objective setup for now, though. Both junglers clearing out their respective jungles. Uh, it's been a split map so far as Marcoon's cleared most of this top half and already making his way into Odo's lane. The wave is pushing towards Irrelevant, so some threat here for Odo Scion. Yeah, I think at the moment, they're not going to be able to get too much there. I feel like it's kind of a case of, yeah, Odo going to be able to stick that ward down. Won't be able to crash this wave, and that's why you can immediately see Zerse moving up here so Odo can actually prevent the freeze that's happening on this top side of the map. But for the moment, Odo's going to be fine, and you can see here Zerse just here to protect him. I mean, that decimating smash, Soul Furnace, did a lot of work already. Limits, throws out the summoner heal, sidestep, spinning axe forward, and forced to flash for his life. Two sums for three in the bottom lane. And DOS with the, the Soraka showing you can still play aggro even on the healing champs. Yeah, nice job here though. You can see how low Marcoon is in the bush though. Xerse already getting a couple of, couple of whacks on him and now going to steal away a camp as well. So nicely done now by XL on the top side. Keep in mind that damage onto Marcoon was because Odo hit him with it. The QW combo forced him away from an irrelevant head what, two waves of minions to deal with? So he didn't want to uh, concede any of those, meaning he couldn't really support Marcoon. And now irrelevant take a little bit of trade damage back and ultimately small advantages there but a plate secured at four and a half Draven just doing Draven things, also 10 CSR. And this is where the ability for the Soraka to poke at the Lulu becomes so crucial. So just being able to get that little bit of extra range, push in, and now Marcoon even setting up in the spot side as well to make sure that you can keep this push going. Zeratus in trouble though, very low underneath the tower. Does he have the Shroud available? I didn't quite see the cooldowns. Three minions to work with. Cersei at least step forward potentially threatening the play. While that's going on, Marcoon's making his way down south. So top and bottom lane, pushing towards XL in favor of SK. On the other hand, VTO doing the early game Syndra thing, kind of expected during the laning phase, using that range, using the uh, CC to his advantage, and bullying, he's got himself a 6 CS lead already, and that'll grow just ever so slightly. I'm fortunate there for video that he just didn't have the mana for Cersei to set up that dive, so they do end up calling off. Now with the level 6 though, if you manage to poke down Cersei that low, maybe you can make something happen, but with the earlier reset from Cersei in the mid lane, immediately SK are going to turn over towards this dragon and set themselves up. Yeah, of course, dragon will go the way of SK. Looks to be uncontested for now. We can see if Cersei steps towards the pit and will spot it out. Doesn't have backup, doesn't have support. How brave is he feeling? Blast going forward, flash away, and no, I was, I was trying to build it up, I wasn't sure if he's going in. But the thing is, we know from SK yesterday that them having a lead is actually the scary part of the game. So maybe this is actually good for Excel, because what we saw yesterday was that SK, they started off looking absolutely spectacularly against Koi, but they got a bit over eager when it came to the mid game, then started to teeter off again towards a later point and gave Koi a lot of these opportunities to come back. So I think coming into this, it's a nice start for SK with the advantages they built on bot side and that dragon, but now we got to see if they can actually enter into the mid game and be like, cool, we're going to take this significantly slower than we did You've yesterday. just made me nervous, Dacta. You've just, because they had a good early game, they generated a lead, they got a little too high fee, as the kids say these days, and they're on champions like Jax, Akali, and Draven that have to go forward, that have to play proactive. I mean, it's literally in the DNA of the champs. So we want to see a uh, improvement on yesterday's performance. SK, of course, they lost that game to Koi, whereas XL were able to be victorious in their matchup. But this is a little bit as expected. Level 6 is in the mid lane. Both top laners hit level 6 as well, teleporting back to the respective lanes. So playing at somewhat as you would anticipate in the sort of neutralizing compositions. Yeah, and for SK, it would be really nice if they could pick up that win. Getting to 4 would put them in such a good spot, it's especially when we look towards back of winter, where 
that three was the magic number to try and force those tiebreakers. So just having that little bit of separation, especially between Fnatic and Heretics at the bottom, would be a really big pickup for SK. Yeah, I mean, I just talked about it right at the beginning of the show. If uh, SK win this game five and two, pushes XL down two and four, and more importantly, if they sat three and three as the games play out, the number of scenarios in which you advance does begin to dwindle, and Patrick is being chunked out. Those spinning axes hitting hard, the Equinox silence limiting any of the potential follow-up, but we're still dead even. So Dagda, who do you think is going to concede the first kill here? As it looks like Zerse is going for an opportunity, but neither of these solo lanes really in a position relation with Tower Dive. I think it's going to be a tough one to call. I feel like it's going to be the Rift Herald that makes a lot of the damage here. You're going to see Zerse trying to set up for that. You had Push and Mid, they're getting some vision down. Otto's doing a great job on the top side as well, has about a 15 CS lead for himself, plus having Push. So at the moment, Otto controlling top, but it's SK controlling bot lane and already making XL sweat. I mean, this is three plates already by eight minutes. Taken out, um, both Patrick and Limit have to recall. Of course, because of the fact that Marcoon was down bottom and either Shadowing potentially trying to set up some sort of dive, it allows Xerse to go for that uh, Herald uncontested. Hasn't been able to pick it up. The patience was reset, so this has gone slow. I didn't quite see how that played out. Now, all of a sudden, SK are on the hunt for first blood. It is around the Herald. Dagda, perfectly executed prediction. Unstoppable Onslaught comes forward, and there's no support. Irrelevant couldn't leave lane. And Vito was able to flash himself to safety. Why did you have to curse me like that? They were about to get perfect <laughs> prediction and then it was gone. But I mean, nice job from Vito there, right? Blast Cone into Flash to make sure that he could get that distance and even the ultimate coming from Odo to make sure that he could keep his mid laner safe. So nice job. XL should be able to get this. Even with the roam that was coming through from Limit, it was a bit dicey for SK. Honestly, if that fight had kept going, but we may not be done just yet. Listen, you're still bang on for that prediction. Relevant Certus looking at two and a half members because VTO's low. He still has access to the unleashed power. Certus dashes backwards, no execution. Certus flashes to safety. The power is unleashed. Not gonna find the kill. The wish buys time. And SK have got the first, and Odo forced to run for his life. Doss jumping in with the long range save. And that's a massive win for SK because that was two versus three. Look at the bot side here. Already you can see Marcoon was sitting here. They get that bot lane tower. The Rift Tower doesn't go across and responds. SK win both sides of the map. And not only that, the gold lead is gigantic. 3,000 gold in, what, a minute of gameplay? Do I have a button to actually show this? Yes, I do. That <laughs> is what just happened in the last minute. And even the Whirling Death. Oh! That's so cheeky. Interrupting the back there from VTO. Just being a bully, really, more than anything else. And that's going to be fantastic. The Herald wasn't even yeah. taken in all of that. And that's the thing now. You get this from Arcoon. You've already got the rotation for Exegate towards his top side. He pushes out top lane. Immediately drop Herald if you want to. Get some more plates. And if you actually try and contest this as the uh, bot lane for XL, it's nigh on impossible. You end up looking at potential dives, even with Ceratus having shove him mid. So SK are running away with this game. I mean, 1,100 gold up for Exekick Straven. It was that first rotation lock-in. He's got a 20 CS lead, and he's got backup in the top lane. It has allowed Patrick and Limit to farm up this bottom wave uncontested. So there's no TP. He's going to go try and catch that wave. And as the lane shenanigans are now starting to play out, SK want to uh, uh, use this advantage, use the power of the 10-minute Draven to try take either more plates or Maybe even take another tower, and Zerse obviously had to try to respond. The problem, though, is because you already have Zerse sitting up in this top side behind Odo, there's no one to really help out Zertus here, so you do get a plate going back in favor of XL, but as you start to see Zerse move away from this, this is where it can come a little bit more dangerous. You also have, also have Exekick on the furthest point from the map on the Dragon the spawning, so not being able to use that Herald now puts SK a little bit behind when it comes on rotations to this Dragon, but it looks like they're now going to again swap sides, both sides of the equation. XL sending in their bot lane top. So this game is a little bit more reminiscent of what we saw on day one of this week. Um, slightly slower pace, not as proactive during the early game. And the reason I want to highlight that is, is in yesterday's win against Mad Lions, XL were able to find kills, were able to find skirmishes, were able to create fights and advantages for their team. They spent no time in a deficit yesterday. They picked up 80% of the drakes. They had a successful KDA. Unfortunately today, because of the draft and how it's played out, Unable to find opportunities, unable to really pick those fights, and the one that has happened, or the Herald, rounds one, two, and three, have gone the way of SK Gaming. The thing is, though, it's not like SK have a 
substantial enough lead where it's like, okay, they Game can just auto line. win, right. right? So I think a lot of this is still waiting to see exactly what happens. I think if Exekick ends up cashing in, that's going to be a very different story sitting there with just 340 stacks. Now the Rift Herald's going down, but at least XL have been doing a decent job of trying to get gold back into the Zeri's hands. Look at that, more gold secured. Doss stepping forward. I'm waiting for the prison. Search is looking for the flank. 344 stacks for Exekick. Observers, if you are able to highlight the gold when that gets cashed in, please let me know. He's a level 7 versus a level 10 mid laner, and Exekick is daring him to step forward. I do think, though, that we have to actually watch where XL are positioned on the map, because usually when we end up in this position where one team has a tempo advantage, you want to try and put your AD carry and support on the, if you're behind, in the mid lane. You can then push in mid and make sure that you're constantly keeping control where your support can lean to either side. Because XL have left Patrick and Limit on this top end, it's become a little bit more difficult for them to actually have control over this top side of the map. So now as SK rotate up, they're in a better position where they can now threaten onto the top lane turret. They can also create man advantages where Marcoon coming up and now as you look, three members on the top side, you're just had limit reset, SK gonna see if they can try and make a play. I really, really love that point, Dagda, because you're highlighting some of the strengths of understanding sort of the lane assignments, um, sort of the macro game. And it's part of the reason why SK are contesting the top of the table teams and Excel struggling a little bit. Yes, they've got those two wins. They're in a deficit now, and they may need to deal with some level of threats. Das, Exekick, Marcoon in the river. TP's available for Certus and turret plates. What's it? Two secured in the mid lane. One, uh, no, none in the top lane. And obviously that tower's fallen bottom. But Certus may look to pick up yet another in just a second. I think the big one, though, is that all those plates essentially have gone to, to XK, Draven. apart from Certus yeah. here, right? He's just got one for himself. So this Draven is massive. Hasn't reset in a while, though. Still been sitting on just the items that you see on your screen for about the last six minutes. So uh, he's going to have a serious amount of gold when he goes back. You can see it there. So we'll be able to finish off this uh, Mythic very quickly and already be snowballing towards something like the Essence Reaver. Yeah, and of course, Exekix at nearly 400 stacks. Still that thousand gold up, and we're two and a half minutes from Dragon number three. With two already secured for SK, they're playing the tower game. Uh, can't really get through that wave clear of Syndra, so instead they're going to stack four man on the top. Odo just hit level 11, teleports available to him. Marcoon's chucked out the prison, he's got the TP. Nodo is here to respond, but they've got the ghost from Patrick and the flash from Limits. I don't think Odo's really going to be punished for this TP, no. though. If you look at where Relevance on the map, he just reset. So it means you're not really in a position to try and punish this, threaten any damage onto a tier two. So at least at the moment, you're still getting away with that for XL. I think it's going to be more crucial, though, when we look towards the Dragon in two minutes' time, where now you actually have these side laners that can start to punish through the fact that they have advantages in those sides. And what I love is that SK are using all three of the lanes. They're moving their strong points around to either secure turret plates, secure the tower itself, or in this case, like the dragons. They apply enough threat to get the flash away from limit. That Lulu is a juicy target in a minute and a half as he will be flashless. And it's up to XL to find a way back in. Look, we're at the, what, fifth game, sixth game rather, of the spring season. And this is a little bit more reminiscent of what we have seen from XL throughout their six respective games. Slower, a little bit less impactful in the early game. I also think it is fair to say their composition needs a little bit of time too. I would also say just for SK, this is clearly in response to yesterday where I was like, lads, we're not throwing this away. We are yes. taking this slow. We are playing through what we are going to do correctly. And thus far, it's been really good. The fact that they're playing through, again, side lanes with Exe Kick and DOS, making sure that they're always having that super strong side of the map that they can lean to has been working out well. Now with Dragon coming up, they rotate Exe Kick to mid to guarantee mid priority for this. So overall, SK are just playing through Draven so incredibly to be well right now. Yeah, and of course, that Draven has the Kraken Slayer. It's going to be matched by the Shield Bow. Uh, Mythic's picked up pretty much across the board. And with 40 seconds to go, a couple of defensive shallow wards from XL. SK trying to shove out the mid wave. They've positioned Exekick to catch it. He's a level up over Patrick as well. And Irrelevance trying to shove out that bottom lane. So trying to set their objectives. They can take the Herald and then peel down for Drake. I don't know if they're going to be quick enough, but they might try for both. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they try and go for the Dragon. This feels to me like it's a case of, okay, we understand side laning is our biggest priority here. So if we can get these Terrors down, it'd be great. Irrelevant, going to hop away with the ward. And now, though, so with that little bit of time that's bought, there's potential here, honestly, for SK to actually clear out this mid lane and still contest on the bot side. Very little vision, so it would be a little bit scary, but maybe Marcoon wants to try it anyway. BTO, gonna look for the assassinations. Scatter the Week comes out, doesn't go forward 
for the Unleashed Power. Doss still has the ultimate available. Surtis is in the top lane. He may need to teleport for the ensuing fight. Mountain Dragon down to half. 4,000 hit points. Surtis has completed the TP. Odo's trying to push them away with that Soul Furnace. And Surtis hops over the wall. The Whirling Death comes out. And Zersei slides the Dragon down inside the pit. Irrelevant and Markoon and Exekick are rolling over Exile. Exekick cashes out. Flashes away from the pit. The dragon goes to XL. The gold goes to SK. That was a 1,500 gold kill for Exekick. That is so much gold into the hands of this Draven. Uh, first off, the fact that they managed to even get in there to contest it was impressive enough. But once the rest of XL were kind of stuck in the back of the pit, it was happy days for SK as they're able to take that very easily. If you watch where Marcoon is, the fact that, sorry, where Sertis is, Sertis immediately hops over the wall and puts the threat onto Patrick, making sure that with the Whirling Death and also the fact you've got this Akali, it's very difficult for Patrick to really be a key factor in this fight. And as well, look at Video, not really in a position to get on to many of these low health bars. Same with Patrick, who's over the wall, and Exekick is having a field day with the Kraken Slayer in this pit. 1,563 gold on the recall. Exekick instantly completed Bloodthirster and picked up another B. EF sword. Ching, ching, ching. <laughs> 5,000 gold lead. Yes, they uh, they conceded the dragon, but now that Draven is even more powerful for the next fight. And how do you try and kill him now? Not only does he have the BT, he's got the Soraka there as well, which means he's going to be healing so incredibly far in these fights. You also get that big shield from the Bloodthirster now, which is super important for a lot of the burst damage that's going to come through from Video and Cersei. So really at the moment, Exa Kick is going to be a problem in these 3v3s. And you've now got a Relevant, who's Divine Sword to the top side, a Kali, who's a big threat as well. It's very hard now for XL. I think the, the fact that Odo is a little bit ahead of Irrelevant may actually be somewhat irrelevant um, because it's only a small lead. But more importantly, there's more things that a Jax can do for you, either on the side lanes or potentially in the fights, especially when you consider if Scion does go all the way forward, he's got to get through the Sedge. He's got to find the Shroud, deal with the Silence and the heals for Draven, and they can potentially just squash the two damage deals on the back line. And eventually there will become a point where you're, you know, you get to level 15, 16, irrelevant, just says, I don't care about Scion. Yep. And like, you will be underneath tower, but I'm just going to ignore you and I'm going to hit the tower. And that's where eventually you're going to struggle as the XL. So the fact now you've got this easy bridge for Exekick to bring them there, it's going to be quite nice as should be able to just back out of here. I definitely was a little nervous there as Doss with a cheeky recall after the tower secured. That's the fourth one picked up here for SK. They've got two kills, got as many dragon kills as they have champion kills. But more importantly for me, Dagdan, you've talked about it quite a bit this this 20 minutes of uh, early game. Just how SK been mobile around the map, how they've utilized the Draven, and also how XL haven't necessarily had the answers. I think specifically looking at how Patrick and Limit would spend a lot of time in that top lane, not as flexible, not as fluid, and unfortunately they just got pushed further and further back. And you can even see XL are kind of understanding that. The last passage of play, they try and commit three members to the bot side. SK go, cool, we'll lose bot, we take your tier two mid. Now we're going to take over your jungle on this top side and make sure Sergis can continue to push in. So even when XL are trying to commit to these side lanes to try and battle something back. They're just not quite keeping pace with SK. They're not. And just before this next fight breaks out, I want to bring the standings up again one more time. In the event SK are able to push forward and close this out, they are one step closer to that pool one, pool two seeding. In the race, it's BDS, Vitality, and a potential four and two scoreline. Um, if XL find a way to bounce back here, that is going to be a very difficult situation because then teams like Mad Lions, Heretics, Stars Fnatic, they have to deal with the fact that one of their opponents around them gets further and further away. So if you're looking at teams at the bottom of the table, like Fnatic, they actually want SK to win this game. Keep uh, close touching distance with Exile, then hope to pick up more wins in the back half. But it's still very, very close. It's also an uphill battle. Five and a half thousand gold Baron is now a threat. And while multiple members of Exile are trying to, you know, push some vision, challenge to get into the river, Relenv is just pushing the side lane. He's taken a CS lead now. He's pushed the wave all the way to tower, and he had TP. So, again, SK just playing on multiple lanes more effectively. And the gold lead that was there for Odo is now teetering off a yeah. cliff as well. So, this is where you're starting to see those problems creep in. <laughs> the glaring one is obviously the 3.5k gold lead in that AD carry position. X kick. We said that we wanted to see him back onto something that could really step up and be a carry. We've seen it now with 40 seconds until Dragon. They're pushing in mid. The pushed in boss. They're starting to move across over towards this dragon and make sure they're able to secure the third one for themselves. And there's not really much that Excel can do. Their entire jungle is just controlled by SK right now. And of course, for SK, the bounce back. Um, 
in comparison to the loss yesterday, where SK did generate the lead against Koi. They were in a, a controlling position. I would not say it was as commanding as this, um, but ultimately, some of the decision-making, some of the skirmishes, not going the way of SK, allowing Koi back into the game, and then Koi really had a, a pretty dominant end to that matchup. For today, with the Dragon now spawned and alive, using their teleports sporadically. Look, SK gonna commit this time round. Marcoon's thrown out the prison. Smite it down, Vito forces out the flash. Here comes Zerse. TP's being channeled as well as five members of XL have grouped up in the jungle. Irrelevant, looking for a potential flank. Can look to cut them up. Leap strikes forward, counter strike stuns. The death is rolling. The wild growth is used. Searches by some time and goes golden as SK running for their lives. Blast Cone sends Irrelevant to safety. Patrick is stepping forward, looking for the zaps, looking for the damage. Ultrashock laser fired, cleanse forced out. Of extra kick and the excellent Equinox not going to be stepped on. So a lot thrown into the choke point, but nobody goes down. If you can't get on towards the back line properly, there's not really a hope for SK to actually try and win out these fights. Unless, as you can see, they're just kind of kiting backwards, trying to at least get some damage with Draven. But I think they got lucky, honestly, that they still have that Soraka helping to top them up and putting the health bars in their direction. Really good ultimate from Cersei to deny that engage because that was looking real scary with the relevant, but will still be the dragon going over to SK. And of course, the third item secured for Exekick. He's been sitting on an Infinity Edge. Hurricane just secured for Patrick. One soul, uh, one dragon away from that mountain soul. And I actually think the mountain soul could be really problematic. It makes VTO's life so much more difficult. And of course, Patrick on that Zeri, yes, needs a lot of time to burn through, but. The uh, additional resistances, however slight, still going to make the relatively limited damage profiles here just a little bit harder, more difficult to execute. Yeah, I think the big one is it's more of a case of XL needs to be able to absorb that immediate impact from SK, bounce back, and then turn the fight around. Right. So a Mountain Dragon is going to help just with that initial impact SK have because it can absorb more of the damage and more of the issues that XL are throwing at them and stay in the fight longer. But if XL actually managed to get a couple of these Mountain Dragons for themselves, yeah. you might as well say goodnight. Like, there's no way that SK have the damage profile themselves to actually become a major threat. And we just saw that uh, exemplified in the previous fight, right? Uh, VTO was jumped on, was able to get in range of the rest of his squad, and once XL were able to group up his five, they were able to hold off SK. This is where we stand, this is where we fight, this is where we hold them. And they tried to pull their best Leonidas. They'll need to keep that channeling going. They want to face off once again. Five versus five in this middle lane. Outer tower still standing. Scatter the weak has been fired. VTO, level 15 for now, looking for the high quality gameplay button press r try to blow somebody up but he needs to be in range to do so at the moment though it, there's not a huge amount that sk can really push forward on now so they need to start moving irrelevant and start to the side lanes but they know they're at a tp disadvantage which is why we're seeing a lot of the a ramming happening at the moment once these tps start to crest back up that's when we'll actually see them move off into the side lanes once more and try and create these isolated pockets where instead of going for the full-on brawl in those team fights you're having you know the three-man mark who next to kick dos train try and find these quick picks onto people like patrick and find those moments to get the kills well what about one of the other objectives here um the previous Dragon was uncontested, but with Baron being up, and honestly, both teams have shown um, a fair amount of interest, uh, not only in the rhythm, river, but in the vision around Baron. Like again, trying to challenge, clearing out those wards, trying to push their own vision forward. Uh, teleports are on cooldown for three of the four members, but that could be one of the objectives where Exile could pull members of SK towards them, but they need to make sure that if they do that, and uh, the, for the peel in the fight, they cannot allow Certus and SK to find that quick kill, because that's when they get swarmed. Yeah, the biggest problem that we're actually going to be looking at is the fact that you can't really be in a position where if you don't have the... If you don't have your ward coverage up far enough, it's going to be very difficult for Certus to really be in a position to push in on topside, right? right. And that's why there's a lot of battling. It, it is vision for a Baron, yes, but it's also vision for control over those side lanes, so you can push up in mid. And as long as you end up in a 4v4, even as Excel, you're in a really, really good spot. So that's why SK at the moment are actually struggling a bit to get control, but they really just need to send Irrelevant to the bot lane, draw Odo Omni away, set Certus into that top lane, and try and match your mid and top wave, so you can actually then move in as a four-man unit to get the vision and we kind of get to see it a little bit here where they got some control at the moment and of course they can do that now because the teleports are back available i think for the last couple of minutes neither tp for irrelevant or certus was up and usable and it has just popped up so it's going to be sk stepping into the pit they've started this one they're still on top of plenty of vision long range engage wow. here from xl 
Not going to be likely. Down to 3,000. Ultra Shark Laser fired up. Secured. XL1 to try win the fight. Sirtis wants to chase down Patrick. Ghost and Flash available to him. Exit kick. Is Sirtis is not here. Through Odo. Sirtis is trying to look for the back end as once again. Dos split out from the fight. Now Sirtis left alone with five members of XL. It's going to be jumped on and likely taken down. Perfect execution backwards. Forced to hop over the wall and does so. Escapes with his life. That was beautiful. Eventually throwing down the flash too. Brilliant call from SK. They get the recall on XL. They immediately start up that Baron with all the damage that's coming through from Relevant to notice that Kraken Slayer and Exit Kick. They're able to burn it down so fast. And though Sertis looked like he's in trouble, he actually buys a good amount of time for Irrelevant to push in mid. Then you're able to get the resets for Exit Kick. So he's now coming back on the map just in time for this Dragon as well. So getting their waves prepped for Dragon. Really nice job there by SK. I mean, it just feels like SK have got uh, a, a stranglehold on all of the decisions. Their mobility in the pit was great. The way they split up. So just even if he had gone down, it still would have been a worthwhile trade. But he doesn't. He escapes, costs him only the flash. And with Dragon spawning in 20 seconds, now XL are on the face, or like potentially at risk of losing the soul as well as the Baron. Teleport being channeled. Surtis looking for limit. He flashes over the wall. Glacial Prison holds him in place, but there's no one to follow up. SK were not necessarily grouped for the full on fight. And now you got to back away. Limit has no flash, no heal, no ultimate. A lot of those safety tools for people like Patrick in these fights now gone out the window. Marcoon, the big engage tool, also doesn't have his, but without their support, XL don't want to try and contest. And that's Mountain Soul to SK. Really, really nicely done. I don't know if this is a fair comparison. But as the resident old man on the broadcast, the way SK are playing reminds me a little bit of G2 Arrow and Sven and Mithy were around. They generate a lead in the bottom lane, they'd be moved around the map and strangle just the life out of the opposition. They were called boring, they were not the most exciting team to watch, but there was beauty in the decision making, and that's kind of what I'm seeing here from SK. I agree. I think there's some times where they blunder kind of in the mid game with how they set up their side lanes, but right now, this is looking great, and a big difference from their average 14 kills that they have at the moment in the LEC. Average of 14 kills, we're at two for both teams at 30 minutes, and five dragons have been murdered. Irrelevance got that teleport available to him, so he was pushing in the mid lane. While the rest of SK shoving in bottom, there's still 30 seconds on this Baron Empowered Siege. XL, you have to do something. XL, you have to start a fight. XL, you have to look to create an opportunity. Well, they are just going to get bullied to oblivion. The inhibitor's falling in the middle lane. They're down so far in gold, so far in level, so far in damage. It's such a difficult task. But they've now lost another objective, and SK can group up for another in Hiptare. The Baron buff is about to wear off, though, so this will give it a little bit of reprise for XL, but look at the big wave that's in top. SK can even go and match that if they want to. Now you've got minions on the Nexus turrets, and they're going. All right, no Baron buff means now is the time to fight. Whirling Death out. It's a kick, not able to find limits. He's able to run for his life. Stand aside. The Equinox is gigantic. It's a double kill for Certus. Another for Irrelevant. Odo and Limit are running for their lives. This will be the fourth for SK at the cost of nothing. All five members of SK inside the base of XL. They will take down the Nexus turrets. It took 30 minutes for two kills. It took 30 seconds for four kills. And SK take down XL. Slow and steady, SK will close out the game and get themselves the four wins on the board. Beautiful stuff prize by them. Definitely a massive difference from what we saw from them yesterday, but well worthwhile and setting them up fantastically now, as you say, to make sure they can get into that group stage. I mean, really, really good position. Four wins is crucial when you do think about making it to the bracket stage, the best odds. More importantly for me, you can see Swiffer on stage. The interview that he had with Frankie a little bit earlier, talking about that loss, talking about the mentality. Th this SK was focused, was uh, determined, very clear in their game plan. Hard to find those faults that we saw in yesterday's game against Koi that cost them. Yeah, I agree. And the fact that they actually were able to play it through a 1-3-1 one, one composition, which I think a lot of teams in LEC have really struggled to play, it was really, really good. Good understanding of how they want to set up vision, play around them. Particularly, we saw them, you know, battling back and forth over that control on the top side around that barren pit. So overall, great stuff from SK, and it's nice to see them not only have XK pop off and something like Draven, but having the solo laner as well, understanding how to play out the map rather than just going for teams. And if you
you are a fan of Fnatic or Heretics, who both find themselves at one win and four losses, XL now are in four losses and two wins themselves. So what that does mean is that chase to avoid ninth and tenth, the uh, race to making the top eight is even spicier for the fact XL just dropped that game. Uh, quickly, player of the game nominees at LEC on Twitter. It's Markoon, Exekick, and Dot as your candidates. And of course, for SK, now looking, uh, they've got a very, very real shot at a pool one seed. And it would be incredible if they could. I mean, being able to come in as surprisingly as they did in winter, show up again in spring and try and push themselves into that top spot, see if they can get into those last couple of games as well. We get in towards playoffs. They made it in winter. I'm excited to see if they can do it again coming in towards spring. Now. I mean, I've got to remind myself. So they play Heretics, Mad Lions, and G2. So Heretics and Mad teams directly around them. G2, theoretically the strongest of the bunch. You know, also they've got a couple losses to their names. So it's going to be interesting final week for SK when it does look to seeding towards group stage. Yeah, and especially a big kind of test for them as well so we kind of get to see them as they crest into the later half to see teams like G2 go up against them who they struggled when they did get to that top four spot now we really want to see if they can move on from that right definitely the case we're going to hit a uh, command prompt and head on stage with DOS it's another old man joke for you and me I'm here too Trevor hello DOS first of all Tallulah congratulations on the win I did speak to your coach Swiffer earlier he said you had a bit of a serious talk last night what happened uh, yeah, actually about that, I think maybe like what we did good last bit was that we were like super humble and everyone's like really trying their hardest to like pitch in with ideas and fixing each other's issues, like but uh, having priority on fixing their own issues first. And I think maybe we lost that a little bit because we like started winning a lot more than we expected initially. And I think it's hard to like stay humble uh, always when you just like win and maybe you start putting in less effort and you still win and then you're like lose uh, your feet on the ground right so I think those two losses this week was actually kind of good for us because we had to like reevaluate how we work as a team right how much effort do you feel like you put into this victory Actually, into this victory specifically, I don't think we put like an insane amount of effort. I mean, obviously we put a, 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 a big effort into every every game. You're but so humble. <laughs> but it, it's more like it's not like more than usual, right? Uh, I think it's hard to like make changes like during like competition, right? So whatever we spoke about yesterday is like more for for next week. But obviously, it changed like a bit the mindsets of everyone, and I think. Coming today, like, we're a bit more like the old SK that we used to be than the, the cocky SK, right? Let's bring it back specifically to this particular matchup. What conversation did you have at the end of the draft? Because it seemed like from looking at XL's composition, they had answers to what you wanted to do. Actually, I think we had like a different read on that because we actually predicted every single uh, uh, band that they did. So we had like completely scenario like for what's going to happen this game. And I feel like we were like super confident in the draft that we were going to win this game. And something that definitely changed overnight was a lot more restraint because I think there were only two kills in that game before 30 minutes. We're sat in the green room counting it down. We're like, yep, still two kills, 30 seconds to go, still two kills at 30 minutes. Did you feel like there was a bit of a change in terms of discipline? No one was running it down. <laughs> running it down, I'm not sure. Uh, I actually think just like, the compositions, there was just, like too much playmaking, like enemy team, like what engaged do they have, like Sundar QE or something like this. And our engaged, like only Sichuani old counter, or kind of, but uh, yeah, slow game, like enemies respecting a lot, they just give us like objective for free, and we just have to like take it slow, like not get greedy, because I think the only way that they win actually is if we fight like way too deep in the jungle or something like this, right? I know that it was your birthday yesterday, but you got a birthday win, at least today, I feel like, so have a hat. And I'm just going <laughs> to make it official. It's your birthday still, Thank everyone you very much. in Thank you very much. Let's head over to Goldborg to talk through that last match. <sighs> Thank you very much. Yeah, to look for Danny Gold does. Uh, and welcome to you, to my telestrator. Um, Exakick, I want to talk a bit about you as a player as well before we dive into the play, because you're an AD carry who last year got a lot of resources for your team. You were a big playmaker for it. At this split, uh, I mean, the way it split before as well, this split, you have gotten a lot of less resources. It seems like you're evolving as a player as well as an AD carry who can just be reliable in the mid game and not so much in the early game. So tell me about your process as an AD carry here in the spring split. Mm, I think it's also the champs, right? Uh, before, like last bit winter, it was Lucian, Zeri, 
uh, Kate, and it was like if you don't play on bot lane, like whatever team you are, you will lose because right. like the other ADC will do just do one v five later. Right. So we were kind of playing a lot around me because we had no choice. Like Lucian Nami would just take over after at some point if I was ahead. All right. So that's why I was so ahead, and I think the meta shifted where they buffed the the um, melee supports. And also, I feel and stuff who can play kind of like 1v1 on bot. And the Rakan that want to move and the Thresh, you know, that want to move. Yeah, uh, yeah, goes yeah. for mid, get pings and stuff. So it's kind of shifted our play style. And I think we were honestly a bit worse at doing this. And that's what we need to work for. And that's why we were we went 1-2, I think, this week. Because yeah, it's a it's, bit different. It's, 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 I think it's different. So yeah, I don't think I'm changing play style. I just think it's like a bit harder to play. Right, so, that's why so it's my, following the meta more than yeah, anything. That's why right. my like my gold diff and stuff, you know, it's like worse and stuff. Okay, so now we are diving into the play here and I want you to color it because I see two things. I see an enemy jungler who's per maybe getting spotted here. I see yeah. there's a, a little ward here as well. I see you have a jungler pathing down to bot towards bot side and I think you have a slow push. So tell me, what's the SK communication right now? Um, I think I'm level six or something. Yeah, yeah and so. uh, we know that uh, Lulu had no flash or he's gonna get flashed. I think um, in chat it's super, super flash at 8, okay? So we want to get my cash out and we said if uh, Wukong shows topside with dive bot, we have enough wards with the pink, he's not showing here, he's not gonna show here, so we can guess that Wukong is not here. He showed on the banana brush, so yeah. we're just like, okay, now what we do is we will proxy 2v2 because they can't come back anymore and they don't know where Sejuani is. So Sejuani is gonna go in fog and move into topside. Like it's kind of, you know, like mind game because if they know that Seju magically is moving back into topside, they will try to go back to lane, even right. though I think they die. So we can get both at the same time, or like try to semi-contest and deny a lot of resources on bot. So is this a replay or a read you already had on XL, them starting up the Herald here and whatever it's happening? It's just, I think, just, just the, the wards and like the wards we have on bot side and how they react to us walking up, that gives away that Wukong is topside. And then once we have, you know, once we are in the middle of the lane, right. I guess Raven with like turn the sacks or something, execute. You have no flash on your Lulu, you are Zeri, so basically you are not a champ in early game. I think you just don't walk up and you lose the red. Yeah, so I'm actually going to ask a question here as well, because now you're suddenly sitting uh, with a tower for yourself. I think the goal was kind of even beforehand, now you're 3k ahead. How much do you contribute what just happened here to you outplaying them? And also, is it uh, XL making a mistake with how they're playing here? I think uh, Lulu landing phase was not so good, which led her to lose flash, and then that led to losing pressure, because you are kind of scared on bot lane, right? Uh, Draven obviously is a strong laning champ, so right. you build up a CS lead that uh, leads to gold lead, that leads to item lead, and then you just pressure a lot. We are kind of hitting threat on every wave. Right. And that's, you know, when uh, Lulu bases, yeah. uh, Soraka gets more, uh, I don't know what's the name in English of the item, but she gets yeah, a lot of gold. Yeah. So we get wards first, so then they don't have wards, so then they can't play. And so it's just a snowball effect. Also, like, this little trade where they lose Flash and Lulu has to base when my Soraka can get like, I don't know, like 200 golds on his item yeah. ahead. It's very It's broken. pretty good, yeah. <laughs> like it's a small mistake, but with Raven it snowballs very hard, especially... I mean, we are kind of scared, I think, to fight. Or like we had not so good setups, which yeah. I didn't get my cash out too early. But once I get cash out, it's like... It, it's so good. Yeah. It's like, Thank oh, you God. so much for breaking the play down with me. And uh, no you're allowed to join uh, the desk over here. For more fun on <laughs> the analyst desk. It's even, wow. <laughs> awesome. I was wondering, Exekick, if there has ever been a game, preferably that you played professional, where you didn't get the cash out and you were like super frustrated because you should have gotten it and like the game tilted all the way. I think I didn't play Draven too much. No, you didn't actually. I think right? I have like only three or four games in competitive all, all time. And Solo Queue, did it ever happen? Yeah, I mean... A lot. <laughs> it's like the classic Draven uh, meme, you know? Yeah. When we die after not getting cash out, it's just open. Tilter, yeah. Just open, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, go next. But uh, I think this champ is kind of different with Soraka. Because here we could choose to go, like, I don't know, Blitzcrank, Pike or something yeah. and play for the cash out early. But I think it's, like, so scary to play against a Draven that actually didn't get the cash out. Because you get first you get one-shotted by the ulti which is really broken, and then you are like suddenly 2k gold down. So I think you get a big gold lead and also mental uh, advantage when you, lo when you lock Draven. Yeah. And that's what I really like and that's what Hans does very well because also when you play against Hans, you already have mental advantage. <laughs> I mean, uh, when, you, when you are Hans, you have a mental advantage, then you get Draven. And it's like double, you know, so... Super annoying. I love this champ. Just the stress. When they lock Zeri, I, I looked in... I don't know if you can see on the replay, but I insta looked at Simon, I'm like... We have, to, we have to do it. <laughs> we have 0-2, I want to play it. I yeah, want to yeah. get the win. I mean, 
tell me uh, about that specifically? Because, yeah, you were 0 2, and I think um, in both of the games, I mean, especially yesterday, it wasn't like you were out of the game, it felt like. And you always had some chances, but in the mid game, it just didn't work out the way it usually did. What were the lessons that you took from that? We heard a lot from Swiffer about it, but from your perspective? I think we got worse in this week too at tracking tempo and playing like properly on the map. We greeted a lot uh, to get items or like to get waves and stuff. And against Koi, it's, you, you can't do that because you just get punished giga hearts. Especially when they look like, I mean, we had the drafts. I think we had the good drafts, but it's like their draft is easier to play because they have like Lissandra, Lee, Sandra, Lee yeah. It's like one button and you're all, you're dead. Yeah. So if we if we if we drop tempo <laughs> once, it's lost. So yeah. and that's why we did it multiple times. We got a nice Baron yesterday actually, but once you do too many mistakes against a top team because I think they are yeah. kind of good. Yeah. You just okay. lose so. Honestly, it's a disappointing weekend, but I think we got a lot of lessons from the two games. The so lesson is sometimes also important. Yeah, I mean, True. it's it's very rough after the the games. Like, especially me, I'm like super mad after every loss. But we learn, and Learning we need to be group, yeah. yeah, like in the in the long run, we need to be ready for group stage and playoffs. So, True. regular season is not that important. Well, if you... I mean, it is. I mean, if you get out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, then it's Now we are 4-2, I don't know now how Now you're many. in a good spot, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're in a great are, spot. I don't know if we are uh, secured in... Uh, because everything's so close together, it's hard to say, but in last split, you only needed three to be secured. But I just wouldn't be too... You know, keep... <laughs> yeah, keep, keep fighting, keep fighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Treats, you are going to ask something, I think. Yeah, I mean, in general, I uh, heard on the DOS interview as well that he said that you guys got a bit complacent um, with winning so much, basically, in the last split. Uh, how do you think it affects you as well as a player? Do you think that everyone kind of thinks back to their own mistake more? Or did everyone start becoming a bit too, like, uh, impatient with each other and look for more things to improve on uh, from other people as well? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happened, you know. Uh, when So starting at winter, there is no expectations kind of coming from uh, SK because like, the, kind of the past results were... Uh, we ran it down, yeah. Not uh, the best. <laughs> so I think it was very easy to shine, kind of, when you don't have expectations. So we were uh, very hungry to win and we were trading a lot in scrims. We had like 70% win rate or something in scrims. I heard. And it was uh, very good. And I think after the top uh, three in regular season and top four overall, we might have gotten a bit... Uh, uh, like, Complacent? Yeah. Like we had a lot of ego and we looked for others' mistakes instead of ours' mistakes. Yeah. And I think it's really bad, but that's like... You can't really avoid it, kind of, unless you have a lot of experience, right, in your team. Yeah, so work through it a bit, I yeah. think this week um, humbled us humbled, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And I think we are back on track and let's see how the next week of Scream is going to go. But I hope it's going to be better than the last one. I'm sure Definitely. it will, uh, as this was a great game to uh, close out your week too. Thank you so much. Thank Exa. you. Good luck next week. And we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back for Mad Lions versus Team Heretics. Uh, no W Wukong, no W Wukong. Let's fight. Out, out. Just play slow. They're stuck in pit, guys. Lulu the flash, Lulu the flash. Go Lulu, 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 Lulu. Lulu the flash. Give a cash out. I got it. Yeah, that's okay. They're going. It's good fight, it's good fight. Lulu the flash, Lulu the flash. We need to kite, we need to kite, we need to kite. They tell, but... Favorite Raven, favorite Raven. Uh, Zerf, 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 SK, take down XL.
Ready to change your view? Let's go. Cutting edge metal posters for the next generation of collectors. Magnet mounted. Discover officially licensed designs from the brands you love. Displate. Collect your passions.